Hey everyone, welcome to the third video of the 100 videos of code. In this one, I wanted to show you how to sum the values of corresponding indices of multiple arrays. So jumping here to VS Code, you can see that I actually laid out the problem right here at the top. And down below, I've got two arrays, each containing the same amount of values. So for odd, goes from 1 to 9, and even goes from 2 to 10. And what I want to do here is sum each index position individually and get a new set of values right here. So you can see it's 1 and 2 goes to 3, then 3 and 4 is 7, 5, 6 to 11, 7, 8 to 15, 9 and 10 to 19. So the way that I wanted to do this video is just to show you straight off the bat the actual answer. It's one line of code that's going to solve all of your problems. And then right after that, I'm going to break down the whole process in step by step. So let's just say that this new array that we are looking for is going to be called result. That's going to be equal an array of arrays, which is the odd and the even together, and then dot transpose, dot map, curly braces. I'm going to pass in an item, which is just going to loop through all of the items in the array, just going to be called the num, and then num dot inject parentheses colon plus. And right here, right down here, I've got a line to print that to the screen. Just going to copy and paste it here. And come here to the right in the terminal. Just going to run the command to run the program. And then we can see that the result is exactly what we needed right here. So 3 to 19. So let's start breaking this down step by step. I'm actually going to copy this line of code down here to come over here to just serve as a breakdown. You can see that I've got the colorize as yellow and let's just test it right here. And yep, perfect. So you've got now a breakdown section in yellow. So for step one, let's call this step one as a variable. I'm just gonna assign the odd array as the value. Just to check that assigning it this way, it's gonna transfer the values from the odd array to the step one variable. So if we actually, let me just copy all of the print lines here and just give a space and uncomment the step number one. If we print this to the screen, it's going to give us exactly the odd array, which is one to nine. And then we've got step one from one to nine. Perfect. So for step two, let's try making it an array of arrays by passing in the odd and the even with a comma. So if I just uncomment this, Come here to the right and run the code again. Oh, sorry, I got this as a minus sign. It's actually an equal sign. So it's going to give us an array of arrays, which is exactly what we want it to be. So we've got the external square brackets here, followed by the odd array and the comma, and then the second array, which is going to be the even array, and then close square brackets. Perfect. So for step three, let me actually simplify this and just try the odd array with the dot map method and see what happens. So uncomment this and just rename this to step three. And we've got an enumerator, which for our case, it doesn't really matter. It's useless in this case. But if we come here to Chrome under the array section of the Ruby documentations, if we just scroll down here on the left and find the map method, you can see that you have two possible variations. The first one you pass in into curly braces an item that you're looking for in this block of code. So like if you've got an array of five values, it's going to loop through each of these values and then execute the block of code that's in here. And then that's going to generate a new array provided that the map method is being assigned to a new variable. And the second one is just the map method alone. That's going to result in an enumerator. It, it actually says right here very explicitly that if no block is given, an enumerator is returned instead. So let's come back here to VS Code and let me duplicate this downwards to go to step four. And I'm going to uncomment this as well. And now I'm going to pass in into curly braces an item and just call it num. Let's check out what happens right here. So I'm going to run this and it's going to get us an array of five elements, each one containing a value of nil. That's because we're not passing any block of code right here. 
but this can be fixed by going down to step five and passing in the num here. And then I'm gonna just uncomment and print it to the screen. Then it's gonna get us the very exact same result as in step one. It's the very same thing of assigning step one to another array. So we are just mapping each individual element of the respective array to another array, which is step five. So let's proceed down here to step number six. Just gonna rename this. And what I'm gonna do here is try to pass in another array, just an even array, and check if this is gonna give us an array of arrays. And Yep, that's exactly what's going to give us. And you can even just wrap this into square brackets if you want to make this clearer. So if I print this again, it's going to get us the very same result. But let's leave it out for now. So, okay, let's move on to step seven down below. And what I'm going to do here is just uncomment this. And what I'm going to do is just introduce the transpose method. Let's check what that's going to be like. So run this again. That's going to give us an error saying that on line 31, which is exactly where step seven is, there is no implicit conversion of integer into array. That's a type error. Let's just pause this for a second and check out in the documentation what does the transpose method does. If you come here down to the array section again and scroll down to the left, you'll find transpose just right here. Okay, so transpose assumes that self, which is the array that you're working with, is an array of arrays and transposes the rows and columns. So for example, right here, we've got an array called A, which is equal to an array of arrays, where the subarrays consist of one and two, then three and four, five and six. And then what transpose is doing, it's getting the very same index position of each subarray and combining them to another subarray here, just containing those very first index positions. So one, three, and five, just like it is right here. So the first one of these is one, and then it's three, and then it's five. So you have another subarray of one, three, and five, the very same thing with two, four, and six. So coming back here to VS Code, what I think is happening, but I'm not 100% sure, is that Ruby is probably interpreting that I'm only applying the transpose method to the even array, not necessarily the odd one as well. But if I envelop this into square brackets and run this again, it's gonna get us exactly what we want. So it's an array of subarrays containing one and two, three and four, five and six, seven, eight, nine and 10, which is exactly what we needed to be as is right here. So with all of this done, let's move on to step eight. I'm just gonna uncomment this and duplicate this downwards. And now I'm gonna insert the inject method with parentheses colon plus, and that's gonna give us the result that we need. So step eight is now three, seven, 11, 15, and 19, which is exactly the results that we needed here. And also, just for the sake of information, what the inject method is doing, you can find under the enumerable section of the documentation, and then just scrolling down here, you'll find inject. So what it's doing, it's combining all of the elements by applying a binary operation specified by a block or a symbol that names a method or operator. So essentially you can perform addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division using the inject method or the reduce method as well. Both are the same thing. And as it says here, there's no performance benefit to either. So let's go back to VS Code and change this to reduce. And you'll see that it's not gonna give us any problems. See the very same thing. If I wanted, I could put a multiplication symbol here and then just run the code again. Then you have one and two equals to two, three times four equals to 12, five times six, 30, and so on. And that is pretty much what I wanted to show you in this video. Of course, feel free to send me a comment down below saying if, you, if I missed anything or if you'd like to see something else in another video. And as always, I wish you have a great day and I'll talk to you soon. See ya.